15 minutes in, they're like, wait, what if I push this tower by myself and you push this tower? Oh, wait, we're split pushing again, aren't we? <laughs> so uh, it's uh, in their bis best interest, given their draft, to probably get a very strong early and start. You, but you push this tower. Somehow I'm not entirely confident that that would happen. All right. Well, we'll have to watch, wait, see. And now, on the way out early, it's going to be those wards dropped. Uh, items what? picked up, boots for Night Stalker and the Bat Rider. Meanwhile, we've got boots for Sand King. Everything pretty much what you would expect. And it looks like ships in the night will be passing each other. And wards should be dropped without too much concern. Although, Night Stalker and Sand King, they'll bump into each other. Say hi, how you doing? And then run away. Yeah, Noya went for Boots first as well in the Sand King, and so I think even today we've been seeing like different shades of Sand King. Um, earlier we saw him in the, in the previous game that we just saw, it was the kind of duo offlane situation that they ran with the Sand King and the Venomancer put together. And I mean, both of those heroes are in this game as well, but it seems like the real Alliance versus Lotus Alliance have different plans and... Looks like they're gonna be maybe tri-laning with the silencer just to make Batrider's life very, very unpleasant. And I mean, these heroes are perfectly good at contesting a Batrider, especially if Venomancer is able to get some good experience off of pulls. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what Sand King's grand plan is with these boots. I mean, this has always been the classic thing that you end up doing, right? You have the Sand King that is able to move around the map, uh, you know, maybe gank a mid if they wanted to, or possibly you can go around, pick up Bounty Runes. Hesajo here isn't going to be in too much trouble, but at least zoned out for the moment, and all the Bounty Runes going where you'd expect. The big thing for me that I want to see is how 747 deals with playing in the mid lane against a sniper. Like, he has a poor man shield and a lot of regen, but it still, I'm sure, isn't going to be the easiest early stage in the game at least for him yeah it's not it's difficult to say how uh railroaded alliance were in or not alliance uh how railroaded danish bears were in picking that silencer and saying like this is definitely going to be a core silencer because they could have very easily rearranged their lanes put like veno mid and just have a support silencer instead right. but it seems like they definitely 100 percent wanted a core silencer and this game you know it it's it, support silencer would have also been fine in my opinion, but like we said with all the silences, we've got the Skyrat silence, we've got the Night Stalker silence, we've got Bloodright silence. Yeah. You need items to be able to deal with that, especially if you're a very Ooh. team fight oriented hero like silencer. And so if you're a support role, then sometimes you might just get chain silenced. You don't want to have to blow that press the attack that I mentioned just to purge it off. So oh, Jonas trying to get out of there. He's slowed down for the moment. Noya is a little bit quicker. Burrow just barely off the mark, and Jonas is going to be able to make that escape. He will have another Burrow strike in five seconds. Is he really going to die for this? No, he's no. going to punch him, head back out. Okay, and by the way, I'm crazy because Ryze is actually on the silencer, so it is a tri-lane Venomancer core. Right. So, throw all that stuff that I said about <laughs> silencer getting farm out the window, but it's still relevant. Yeah. It's just not going to be the deciding factor. Uh, instead, rises. I, I mean, I, I am now more concerned for the silencer for what it's worth, because Venomancer is pretty easy at recovering farm from wherever, as long as he gets like jungle creeps and stuff like that. Meanwhile, mid lane shrapnel comes in. Yeah, just a little bit of extra damage there. It's always hard to deal with that as a melee hero, uh, but 747 with the help from Noia has been able to secure himself a good bit of CS. Uh, he's just having to make sure that he stays topped off on the region, and then afterwards he should be fine. So Pablo, in the meantime, Boots goes to secure himself a couple of runes. He kicks up the Illusion rune. Handskin was able to um, take rather the bounty up there towards the top side. Well, well, now down here towards the bottom, it looks like Pablo wants to get a little bit aggressive, and Rise might be in trouble. They have a Void. They also have some more stacks of Sticky Napalm, and... It doesn't look like they want to fully commit to that one. Gale used, nothing else really of value. Maybe no mid. Lots of damage being dealt out. They are going to draw first, but Limp picks it up. Has to show Rotten rotates as well, and maybe hoping that he could have gotten a uh, last second press the attack to save the Sand King, but that's kind of a expensive rotation. I, it's not really an easy lane for a Legion Commander, as oh. we can see. Ace, they got the Gale off. That's five stacks of sticking Napalm. If Ace isn't careful, he just might end up going down here. Jonas has been able to bait him into it. No. They still find that kill. 
So Batrider goes down one kill apiece in the early stages. Yeah, it was pretty good by Ace. He ate a tree so that he could stop standing in the Firefly and was able to just attack him from a distance because there's no way that uh, Batrider could have gotten the move speed to walk or fly over the Venomancer. So they get a kill. One kill apiece, but still the mid lane first blood going the way of the Sniper is definitely far more valuable. Oh, Rise? Pablo? They run into each other. And... It is still 30 seconds from nighttime, otherwise that probably would have been the death of Ryze. Um, talk to me a little bit about this Bloodseeker and where you see him going. He actually is going forward onto Hestajo. Wants to man up and take him down. He needs to back out, though. He's taking just a bit too much damage. Uh, what's the big idea behind having the Bloodseeker in the, the core role? How do you how do you end up building him, I guess? He's like a mid-game space creator. And so, oh, unless if he dies. No, he's going to survive. <laughs> yeah, so uh, oftentimes his job is basically to draw aggro away from Sniper constantly. So once Era completes... Oh, as Ryze does die to a Night Arcane soccer. Bolt. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's nighttime. And a haste rune. Oh man, Pablo's gonna fly. Fly straight on down to mid. Uh, and I don't know if they knew, they actually do know about that haste rune. I think maybe not because Only of the vision that they had, and there it's gonna be 747 ran at, and going to be brought down. Oh, oh the howl at turn night! Around. No, he's no way. It would have been a dream. Hanskin plus is going to die here. And yeah, a little plus two for him. Actually, the Burrow comes through. They connected onto Limp, and he's oh. going to end up going down as well. Maybe Pablo going to fall. They end up turning oh, it back miss. around. The miss means that the Night Stalker will escape. But still, they end up turning that gank around nicely. Yeah, and Silencer manages to show up. He has gotten six int now at already five minutes into the game. That's really strong rotations coming out from Ryze. Really great timings. And... The trade-off is that Bloodseeker is super thirsty right now because all these uh, Danish Bears heroes got fairly low. But has to Joe Rotten, as it was, was not having particularly great time in this lane, so it's not like giving Bloodseeker a bit of a boost is going to start changing things. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I guess that the other thing, too, is like thinking about, oh, is Limp going to... I thought he was going to go in again on 747. He's running very aggressively there. Um, nighttime up. It feels Venno. like they want to get aggressive here, although there is still the Silencer that's rotating in with the Sand King. If Ace could somehow stay alive through it, 17 stick charges, might need to pop him here to stay alive for the moment. Is going to do it, trying to bait them into this. Jonas starting to drop low as well. He gets blocked in by his own creeps, though, so that's going to be the death of the Venno. They take down the Bat Rider in turn, but should be the end of the action. It's all good. My boy Silencer's getting smart. He's getting real <laughs> smart. No, you don't. You don't want to have to have your one position Venomancer die like that. But it's nighttime, and Pablo is doing a great job at being very aggressive on the map, and just only with level three does not have that point in silence yet. And so, oftentimes that rules out a lot of potential kills. But Venomancer, I mean, silence or otherwise, he's still a very, very slow hero. Overall, relatively squishy hero as well, even though he is in the core role right now. But he will fall victim to these kinds of rotations and. I mean, the trade-off generally is that you have Howl that is also benefiting from nighttime, but 747 had a Sand King in his lane for a majority of the laning phase, so he didn't have a big oh, rupture. Top yeah, play. it's up top. They're going to be able to catch on to Hestajo, and this should be a pretty what easy the moment? kill. Okay, they did it. Uh, that was a little bit spooky there for a minute, and with 747 coming, he's actually going to be able to catch on to two. Doesn't have that bonus movement speed anymore, and Era trying yeah, to TP dead. out. Yeah, no such luck. Another plus two for the silencer, as you said, getting smart. Yeah, this guy is just getting charity and now. He didn't even really actively participate in that gank, but he showed up at just the perfect time. And uh, Bloodseeker goes down. Again, this is a one position. These are kind of unconventional one positions. So, like, you know, you may, like, be watching the game and you're like, oh, it's not like a Spectre or something like that that went yeah. down. But, no, these are the core farming roles. Arguably, the mids are the ones that are going to be more relevant in the late ultra late game with the sniper and the lycan dueling each other but it's still these mid-game space creators the venomancer and the bloodseeker that are going to be important to ensure their carries get the farm they need well and you know it's starting to feel like maybe you're going to be able to come online a little bit more quickly with that legion commander who's getting ever closer to did he actually have that blink no am no, i tripping no, no. he had a lot of gold on him yeah he invested into the 
Into I guess. the wand. <laughs> into the wand. All I right, confuse cool. the two occasionally myself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a blink dagger, I swear. Oh, it's just a wand. <laughs> no, never mind. Era has rupture again, but he, I think he learned his lesson that Legion Commander is more than comfortable at going 1v1 up against that Bloodseeker. And he does not have a blink dagger, but he is getting closer and closer to level 6 duel. And once that comes online, then Ooh. all of a sudden these silencer rotations become more valuable. No, you have found Pablo and Hanskin. The silence comes out before the Burrow Strike. Now they TP in that Legion. He talked about that level 6 duel. But not not there quite yet. there yet. Ow, and they will we'll be able to slow down Pablo, I think, enough to... Nope, they can't even get the kill. So, Rotation comes in, can't find anything with it, off to the jungle. Yeah, unfortunately, Noya got his Arcane... I mean, Tranquil Boots broken just by one right-click, and so was not able to get the move speed to get into that range for that Burrow Strike. And it's a pretty well-leveled Sand King. He has three points in Burrow Strike. He's level five, so it's not like these poverty... 10 minute level 2 Sand Kings. Noya is getting work done. Even though that he's been spending a lot of time in his mid lane, it's been constructive time spent. Definitely. Yeah, it's the power of Sand King, I feel like. It's just one of those heroes that you give him a little bit of space and suddenly he's getting himself the farm that he needs to become at least on par with the effectiveness as the Legion Commander. I mean, if you think about it, he can probably get more done on the map right now than the Legion can and will be able to for a while. Yeah, and plus Legion's not really interested in getting much done right now. It's yeah. not like you have an invoker that, like, okay, I get a duel, boom, guaranteed victory with a Sunstrike. Right now, if he manages to get a duel, it's only going to be in the context of a team fight. It's not going to be any solo pickoffs. Like, right now, he sees Bloodseeker. I'll hit level 6 on Hester Joe Rotten, and he has two heroes in the vicinity, but Dire Team are also in a similar state, and this ward that was helping Radiant see those two heroes has now been countered out by Hanskin. Well, 10 minute mark, we're getting into it. Uh, not really any notable difference in terms of net worth, but we do have the tomes that are available now if they want to go for it. Uh, level sixes on these two fighting heroes could be huge, but it looks like instead they're just going to go for a smoke rotation into the jungle. Global is enough. They can run into Pablo, and yeah, no ultis on either of them. The blood rate could be pretty big. The silence only connects onto the Veno, though, and they will back out now. Caustic Procking is going to finish that Rise one off. Rise. Yeah, thinking about getting out of there. Oh, he, he wants to stay. He is going to chill and eventually be brought down. All right, but it's still fine. They managed to kill off the Night Stalker, and it's overall a trade. What is Hester Joe Rotten doing? Okay. He wanted to farm that creep. <laughs> wow, they still want to go. I mean, they are quite strong right now. Uh, one Burrow Strike, as you mentioned, it could catch one of these guys, kill him off, because they have enough damage if they can stay on top of him. It's just about keeping them in that place. Yeah, and so it's in their best interest to keep this aggression up right now. Batrider is farming the Radiant Jungle, 747. I was like, what the hell is this dude doing here? But he has instant Batrider has donated the lane to the Night Stalker because Venomancer is, I mean, he's basically given up the lane. He wants to go find kills now that he's got his Poison Nova up. He's, you know, got a Veil underway, so he's not really interested in farming right now. He's done his job. He's got four points in wards. It's time to start creating pressure on the map. This is the, the dream right here, if you will. Just slowly take down the towers. Likewise, Alliance on the other side, they want to try and pressure the tower in turn. Limp is quite good at being able to do that also. So it is time to keep the pressure on. Uh, as far as Hanskin is concerned, do you think that they're going to be able to get a hell of a lot done with Mystic Flare on this team? Like, a Batrider Lasso into it feels like it could be quite effective. No, really the main thing, I think, is just the silence, which yeah. is why he's actually opted to max it out first. Okay. Like, the Mystic Flare is great, but even if you do manage to get a lasso, like, chances are you want to drag them back as far as possible. You don't want to waste the time yeah. trying to keep them in place, especially when you have something like Rupture, because the further you drag them back, that's the further they have to run to get back to their team, which means the more damage they'll take from Rupture. So, you basically, like, Alliance really likes Skyrath. Not very many teams like Skyrath. Alliance loves Skyrath. And it's not necessarily always for the silence. Oftentimes it's for the early game irritation that Arcane Bolt provides. Now Pablo going in on Lycan. Oh, unfortunately they don't have Happy last. So they had a haste rune. Great silence comes out. It's going to be able to block that combo. It would have been huge if Jonas would have had Flaming Lasso up, but went for the more you know, damage-oriented build and dominating the lane. And because of that, uh, with the haste rune, he wasn't able to pull somebody back. But still, you know, nice little thing there, canceling out the first epicenter of the game. Yeah, Jonas and Fem didn't really have, like, the most dominating lane. They did manage to get that one kill on Venomancer, but he was still kind of, like, only trading farm. And so 
he didn't go for the lasso, and he's actually going for a Blink Dagger first, which is something that is not necessarily guaranteed on Bad Rider these days. Oftentimes you will see a drum, which Jonas and Fam still may most likely turn that wind lace into a drum, but yeah, for right now, they want to get that Blink Tiger up and running, and then he and ba uh, he and Bloodseeker can start making some magic happen because Bloodseeker has completed a Midas, and that's you know I I said that Bloodseeker should be a mid game space creator, but really Sniper has been very well protected overall. Uh -oh. There has not been too much trouble that Lycan has been giving him, so he's pretty safe even though. Like, it's kind of an intimidating lineup he's going up against. Oh, they end up catching the Night Stalker. Oh, great silence comes out. They're not going to be able to break the flick. He gets away. He oh, he died. He ended up dying in the base. All right. Well, it works. Hanskin, meanwhile, is going to get eaten up by the big bad wolf, 747. And well, quite happy with himself about that fact, bringing the NA flavor to the EU. Eric Dong. LC does not get the dual victory, but Silencer gets yet another plus two. This Rise has 14 and one into minute. And like I was saying, when I thought Silencer was a core, I was like, this dude needs to be able to get farm to be useful up against Alliance's lineup. But right now he's managing to get a lot of assist gold and show up to a lot of fights. So Rise is keeping up very well for support Silencer. And I think that Danish Bears is one of those teams that if you haven't really been paying the most attention to keep your eyes on them this is quite a good squad and you know they showed their prowess even before they ended up making the roster change i think that they're expecting that they're going to be even better after that roster change just uh based upon the way that they've been playing on through this qualifiers alliance is now making this move in towards mid but already top recognizing lane, what could be happening. they're not going to do it instead oh, there was it, an epicenter on top lane era just barely tps out of it and survives it Two hero gank attempt, and now Here's a lasso. The on the ace. They get the global out, but it's already a bit too late. They throw out the Veno ulti, and it does look like now maybe they can catch on Hanskin. to Hanskin. Hesta Joe Duel does have the mana, but silence. another long duration silence turns back around. The Mystic Flare almost kills him off, and in fact, it's going to be Limp that gets the kill with the right click. Maybe going to finish off Boom. Ace as well, Boom. alive on 40 HP. Night Stalker not going to be able to catch up to and kill him. Veil turn back around upon, and He's guess what? We got some more He's plus dead. two going the way of maybe not. Yeah, uh, yeah, he gone. Well done. Rise, just getting everything for himself early on the support silencer. Yeah, Arcane Seal is pretty value right now on this Skyrath because there's just so much magic damage on the side of Alliance. It doesn't really look like it, but like it boosts the Batrider damage, it boosts Shrapnel damage, it boosts Assassinate damage. It's all these little DOTs and nukes that are getting so much benefit out of the increased magic damage. It's 40%. Oh, 747 again. Gonna run into the Bat Rider. Maybe he can run Rupture down with here. He is actually in maybe a little bit of trouble unless he can burst down Era in time. Trying to run through him. The level one rupture just not quite doing <laughs> enough. Like it doesn't give a damn. 747 just gonna eventually use that TP out. We all love to see. And Alliance kind of left wondering what are we gonna do now? <laughs> yeah, you know, they can attempt to de defend this tier one, but if you don't have the shrapnels of Sniper, it's a little bit difficult. Uh, Ace has maxed out wards and also almost maxed out poison touch as well, so like Skyrath can't really get very close. Batrider is going to have difficulty getting close, which Batrider has completed that blink dagger and he has lasso and he's looking for something, but there's going to be no follow up even if he does manage to get, grab someone, so they're just going to forfeit this tower. I mean, I think the biggest thing about this is taking that tower and another like two minutes in the jungle. Sand King's going to have Blink, and that even opens the game further the, to, for them to make moves around the map. Yeah, especially because it's a good time for Rise as well. Global Silence is going to come off cooldown so they can start taking these fights because Alliance don't really have the best team fight. They have pretty good, like, pickoff, which is the power of the Night Stalker and the Bat Rider and the Bloodseeker. That's their claim to fame. But in a full five on five engagement, they will get pretty dismantled by Danish bears unless if like they start they they need more items on alliance to be like equivalently strong in team fights and I, I think that too like we saw eventually with levels bloodseeker rupture does become a huge problem for Lycan to deal with but right now the damage is just not there he's just able to run through it uh, without any type of fear at all and, and now it's not only going to be like, if you are rupturing to try and run away, that's not a good look. Like, that's not what you're trying to do as a Bloodseeker. Yeah. 
And I'm curious to see what he progresses for after completing this Midas. Um, every once in a while, people are always very surprised whenever a Bloodseeker picks up an Aghanim Scepter, but I think it's like a pretty legitimate purchase, especially this game. Oh. Happy center. Yeah, down bottom, another plus two for Rise, and that was not even the blink reveal. So again, you look at the way that this initiation is going to go. Blink, Burrow, Duel, s Global Silence. Yeah. Anybody's dead. It doesn't matter who. And it doesn't even matter if you blow all that on one target. Yeah. Jonas and Fam looking for something on 747. He's so tanky. Bloodseeker doesn't have level 2 rupture yet either, yeah. so it's not going to happen. They just can't do it. They're too big. They're too bad. They're too much going to blow your house down. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about the wolf meme. That's hey. great. That's good. All right. Uh... Burrow is up, or rather Blink is up for both the Sand King and the Legion Commander, and with the potential for Slow Siege from Venomancer, it's just a very well-designed draft from Danish Bears. Yeah, and Alliance kind of like, they're, they're pretty dependent on this Silencer, I mean, sorry, on this Sniper being able to get a large amount of farm, which again, I'll say again, he has managed to stay very safe. He's keeping up in net worth, with the Lycan, despite, or well actually the tower count is pretty similar right now, they're just one tower behind on Alliance, but Limp has been farming very well, and it's usually the initial phases that are the hardest for a sniper, and usually uh, teams have to spend a lot of time babysitting a sniper, but, you know, Limp has been very self-sufficient, he's been finding farm in safe places of the map, and he will be a problem even for a Lycan moving forward. He hasn't gone for anything like a pike, and Pike isn't really that effective against a Lycan since he can just close the distance very quickly. But still, you are having to go very, very deep to kill a sniper. And once Bloodseeker does get those points in rupture, then you're not really willing to walk that deep if you're going to lose half your HP on the way. And I mean, the other thing too is, like, y you think about the way that the, the fights are going to go. I, I don't know if that's even going to end up mattering. Because, like, if they find the sniper, then it's just GG at that True. point. Like, that, that's not going to end up at working. Because you don't have any defensive stuns outside of Lasso. You don't have any stuns at all outside of Lasso um, to be able to really, like, control any of these heroes. I don't know. It's it's a tough game for Alliance. And I am ended up going for the Shadow Blade Lycan. Yeah, it's Silver so interesting. Just, Silver just quite good against Bloodseeker. Yeah, but chances are if you're initiating on Bloodseeker, then he should be dead regardless. Yeah. It's not like you're gonna like just break him midway through a team fight because like thirst only <laughs> really kicks in at the end of a team fight whenever he's just like roaming around and he's everyone is he's hunting for scraps. So yeah, Silver Edge is a peculiar pickup, but it definitely enhances the split pushing potential if they manage if they decide to go down that path. But right now they're invading into the dire jungle. I'm not going to find anyone, but they'll play some aggressive vision. Ooh, and Jonas? Start setting up. The wrap. The long, long wrap around Era. He's walking into the lane. Do they realize that he's over here? The blood right gets laid down. Lycan wanting to run in. He has a shadow blade used and is going to. There's a sentry anybody. ward there, but no real vision. And he actually. All I right, think they may have barely seen him. Ah, uh, yeah, they got... Oh, oh, good jump back by Jonas. All right, that'll keep them alive. Still, though, they can siege this tower. Yeah, and there's not really that much Alliance can do in return. No one is top, and that would have been the best tower for Alliance to push right now. Instead, they're bot, but the bot tier 1 has already been claimed. So, I guess they're just going to give up a tier 2, uncontested, and not really do anything constructive in the meantime, which is a damn shame for them. Yeah, this feels pretty bad. Oh, uh, it looks like Bloodseeker is going to go for Radiance after this Midas. Okay. Um, so it ensures late game more, but the thing is that Lycan has no reason not to build a BKB this game, because, like, you're going to have to deal with Sniper, like, I mean, you're going you're gonna to have to deal, well, actually, maybe he could get away with not building a BKB, but I guess, yeah, never mind. I guess, I guess Lycan can get away with not building a BKB this game, but Radiance still is not really the best item at team fighting either for a Bloodseeker because the cores of uh, Radiant Team are just so tanky that even like if they manage to linger around in a fight for a little while, 
it's not going to be that big of a deal to eat a lot of Radiance Burn damage. Radiance Burn damage is super great against like a bunch of squishy supports because like like a lion will just show up and try to get like a spike, and if he stays around too long, he already lost like, a quarter HP thanks to Radiance. But that's not really the case with uh, Danish Bear's draft. Silencer is the squishiest hero, and he's still pretty respectable. 1.1k HP with this Helm of the Dominator completed on him. And I think honestly, at the end of the day, it's like that Helm of the Dominator is pretty indicative of the way that they want to play this game. They're adding armor onto all those heroes. They have the health regen aura. They are pushing down the buildings. This game could conceivably be over in like 12 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> if not sooner. <laughs> like, I don't know. The next stage is definitely going to be a big uh, incentive for a Danish Barris to just let Lycan mow down a tower because there's really nothing, like you said, there aren't that many stuns. And at worst, you are concerned about the lasso, but Legion Commander, as you see, is just sitting back, ready to press the attack at any given moment. And once press the attack comes out, then there's, I mean, that was your only way at keeping the Lycan under control. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see. Unless something changes pretty largely in the next couple of minutes, I we're like uh, potentially going to end up running into a pretty rough situation here, maybe back on schedule again. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. They only allocate 30 minutes of pop for each of these games according to the official schedule, which to me is very surprising because even with the draft, it's like game a game has to be over extremely right. quickly for that to happen. All right. For Alliance now, what is the way that they try and play this out? How do you stall for more time? Is there any sort of like movement around the map besides just keeping the lanes pushed out, or is even that too risky at this point? They can go for pushing out lanes, but once a high ground defense comes, their uh, support heroes need to be in good positions. And what I mean by that is you got Lycan sieging high ground. You can't have Skyrath and Nightstalker be on your high ground. You need to have them be behind the enemy team. You need to have them be like near your jungle camps, ready to pop in. Because if you can't silence the Legion Commander, then you will not win a fight. And so you need to silence the Legion Commander. You also need to silence the Silencer, because Global is going to disrupt your team fight. And so Alliance need to you know, get whatever they can right now. Ideally, you want to be getting good farm on Pablo, in my opinion, which he's approaching closer and closer to that Aghanim Scepter, just 1.4k gold away. And that's going to be fairly important, because, like oh, I said... No. Oh, Limp. They, they've got the wolves on him. Oh, Limp, no! This is not nice. meant to be! You have one hero. The global comes out as well. They actually weren't able to get him away. He's still dead. Um, they weren't able to get it off before the lasso came out. Able to dodge the Mystic Flare as well. Hesson Joe backing out, getting away from it. And now Skyrath like Mage is going care. to go down. He does not give a damn. Jonas is going to drop as well. They don't lose anybody. And Alliance lose a hell of a lot. Yeah, and I didn't, yeah, so they didn't even use the Aegis, which they ended up putting on Ace Venomancer as opposed to the Lycan, which a little bit surprising to me, but, I mean, we saw a Lycan just run through a level 2 rupture and did not care whatsoever, so I guess he's probably not, he, he doesn't think he's going to die anytime soon, and I don't blame him because... The team that he has around him, I mean, 747 is extremely well protected with this draft, and he doesn't even need to show up for this tier 2 push up top. Turns to daytime, Pablo has to back off. Still working on that Aghanim Scepter because he died there, so a little bit of a... Actually, did he die there? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Okay, never mind. I, yeah. I mean, so here's the other thing that I'm looking at. It just it feels like everything is sort of thought out and ready for Danish Bears. They have, like, all of their ducks in a row. You have the wolves that are following around the Night Stalker if he moves in to try and make some type of play. Uh, they know that eventually they're going to be getting that Aghanim Scepter on Night Stalker, so they're trying to end the game before it even matters. Like, they're going to be able to maybe finish it by the time they're pushing high ground and being able to see in absolute clarity mm -hmm. that their racks are gone. <laughs> like, it's it's a rough one. Uh, you do have the Radiance Bloodseeker, but like you mentioned, it doesn't really feel like it's going to make that big of a difference. It really isn't, because there's just no clean initiation that allows Bloodseeker to just, like... Like, a lot of times when you go Radiance Bloodseeker, it's much the way that you play something like a Bristleback. You're sprinting around, you have super high move speed because of Thirst, and you're just being able to 
like spread the fight apart because like you come in and then like it's like a repulsive force of magnets because like you come in <laughs> everyone suddenly disperses around you wherever you go but the lead that right now danish bears have i mean 17 to 7 at 28 minutes into the game bloodseeker is not that snowball a dominating force that people need to be afraid of yeah he's got decent hp Decent amount of damage. Oh wow, and Lycan's going for blade mail. Dude, oh <laughs> man. He's oh, like... he has it completed so so many times. I uh, I guess it's not it's not as popular anymore, but like back in the day when Centaur was super popular, you would get like blade mails and like everyone on your team. Yeah. And whoever he ruptures, you immediately hit the stampede, and everyone just like runs around in circles, and Bloodseeker will just <laughs> evaporate. Oh, that's gonna be pretty great to watch. Yeah. So Blade Mill is now completed. I uh, that is like the best item. The is the best item he could have gotten. Because I mean, we've seen it. Just doesn't he doesn't care. No, he does not care whatsoever. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see if they finally feel comfortable to go for a high ground push. You certainly aren't under any pressure to not go for it. Like there are 40 minutes left yeah. on the Aegis, so maybe that's the biggest you incentive. 40 minutes left I'm on sorry, the Aegis? I'm sorry, 40 seconds. Sorry, that okay. last game is still on my mind. But <laughs> there are so many Aegises, it might as well. Oh, oh Pablo. There it is. Pablo, unfortunately, is going to be brought down here pre uh, Aghanim Scepter, and well, they dropped the global as well to boot after the fact, and a chase on seven, in. 7 7. All right, they're going for What are you going to do? You're going to rupture him? You're going to rupture him? Oh no, he's trying to run away. Don't do it to me, please. Yes! Oh god, he didn't quite kill him yeah, off. Yeah, he shrined, that's why, though. Oh my god. <laughs> that's amazing. Problem is, Bloodseeker's super thirsty now. He just is claimed, but he was going to time out anyway. Yeah, he needs to be careful with those armlet toggles. It was a good <laughs> dream, and he ends up doing a lot of damage. Doesn't quite get the kill. Uh, but I guess what, you just go heart now and make it happen again? Dude, I hope so. <laughs> I seriously hope so. Yeah, they're going to go over and hit the shrine. Uh, they did burn through the Aegis for that. They used global. You know, I wonder if it was too memey and it wasn't actually enough. Like, they did end up losing a lot from that. Well, I mean, they lost... They lost expendable stuff. Like you can get, you'll get the cooldown back for global. You'll get the Aegis was gonna get claimed anyway. So even though they technically yes lost stuff, it wasn't anything permanent. Whereas a kill on Era might be permanent, but no one's following up. Yeah, no, yeah, maybe a bit too far forward. They jump forward. Oh, do you have the blade, blade mail. mail as well? Blade mail is a pretty good item apparently. They do kill off Hestijono and now gonna pull up that Sand King. Rather, Venomancer up onto the high ground. They get the ulti onto two. Can they bring them down? Pablo in trouble. Right. So two damage. is going to be Jonas, and yeah, 747, he's all up in their grill. They kill them all off, and this one might finally be some objectives off the back of it. <laughs> oh, he's going in. <laughs> Bloodseeker buys back. He does not have Rupture. Even if he did have Rupture, I don't really know what he would do, but yeah, this is not a easy situation. Legion Commander is dead, but the problem is Batrider is also dead. It w they wouldn't Radiant Foot wouldn't feel confident going for this if Batrider was alive and LC was dead. But with Batrider and no lasso being an issue, it's all good. And since Global was used in that earlier fight, they didn't use it in that fight that we just saw. And so Global will be up in 10 seconds now. You think that he cares about being silenced? He He's got not. the Mask of Madness already. He of silences course. himself. That's true. All right, so Shrines now soon to go down as well. Danish Bears just dotting their eyes, crossing their T's, and getting themselves set up to possibly topple the Champions Cup champions, Alliance. Yeah, and I don't know if this is Danish Bears' first match of the qualifier or if this is their second match of the qualifier. I think it's their second one. Okay. But uh, a lot of people consider them to be one of the Dark Horse candidates. People who pay attention to the EU scene consider Danish Bears to be one of the Dark Horse candidates to perhaps topple Secret as now oh. initiation. Caught yet again. The Blade Mail's a there. Dieback. A lot of damage. AR not going to get the dual victory, That's but okay. plus two nonetheless. And now Lycan. Oh, he gets piked out by Limp. Oh my god, he has 32 intelligence on Silencer? He's what? A smart man. Oh my, my boy god. Rise. He goes to school goes to college. And he's taking the lines to school right now. As what? now TP out from Pablo. He has not yet completed that Aghanim Scepter. He's so cool. Okay, he sells out stuff. Yeah. Okay. It, again, in absolute clarity, your base <laughs> is gone. <laughs> High definition, 1440p. You can see 
all the ground where structures used to be. I, know, I was mistaken. This was not Danish Bears' first cast. They have another game afterwards where they're going to play Mouse. That's so the one this I was is their first about. This is their first game. Okay, well, they're coming in strong. This is the strongest game I've seen from a team thus far out of the three matches that I've seen for the day. The biggest thing to me is I haven't really seen a misplay out of exactly. that. Exactly. There hasn't been like anything that stood out as this is a bad movement. And, and this is a team, again, that ended up competing in lands very recently and did well in them. And now they're looking stronger than ever. Yeah, be, be worried, guys. Danish Bears. I mean, at least under, under the DB tag, that's true. But like under Cloud9, which was like 80% uh, of this roster, they had issues. As X Imperial, well, they were very strong, but then like on Cloud9, they were never really able to make waves. I don't know. I mean, I think that they did. I mean, we can talk about the the beauty of Cloud9 later. But, uh, <laughs> that's true. I, I, I always felt like they were on the verge. Um, yes, that's true. But there was a lot of hype coming for them as Imperial yeah. that there was like this is the new e. This is like what Liquid became. Right. It said like this is the new dominant force in Europe, but was never really able to you know, sees that kind of hype. Yeah. But now coming into this qualifier, a lot of people, like you said, are having eyes on them. Definitely. All right, 25 to eight. <laughs> it's an ugly score, but 34 minutes in, Alliance. If there was a way back into it for them, like we're talking about the perfect team fight here. Everything goes right. The star is a line. What's it look like for you? The same thing that I said earlier. Uh, the fact that Alliance need to somehow manage to get behind. Like, half of them need to... Man or, or if they manage to go for a full flank, that's great. But I find that unlikely that all five of your heroes are going to be able to get into a smoke and f catch all five of Radiant heroes off guard. But that would be, like, ideal, ideal. What's more realistic is that you have a couple of heroes on your high ground. You got Sniper, and you got Bloodseeker on the high ground defense. You have Vision of Pablo with Zaganim Scepter Gem as they get a lasso onto the Sand King. This is pretty he nice. The global comes out, and they actually have to stop now. And Burrow striking away. Going to be seven, fine. 7-4-7. Seven. Seven, seven. He is silent. They have Vision the on the Pops the Blade Mail. Lots of damage being dealt. Yeah. And Era drop down low. They haven't found it yet as a kill is coming. And Purge off the silence. forced to back out. Okay, still fine. Although, yet again, Lycan has kind of bled himself dry, so he yeah. needs to go to the donors of the Ancients of the Lifesteal to get a little bit of HP back. They have another shrine. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's all good. Again, it's not like the best building hitters in the world. It's much more of these, like, take a team fight, win it handedly, and then go in. Well, Lycan can get the work done on outer towers, but yeah, for these high ground situations, like they haven't gone for that kind of slow siege that I was saying where you just put Lycan up front and center, have Hestajo ready to press the attack off any silence once it comes out. Like that's why I keep illustrating the ideal team fight being Alliance somehow silencing these backlines, but it doesn't even seem like Danish Bears care about taking a fight like yeah. that. They can just take these brawls and come out on tr tops uh, frequently, and now a smoke. Oh, there's the catch, there's the jump, there's going to be the duel as well. A lot of damage being dealt. They actually win the duel for Limp and Eric Dong trying to take them down. He popped the blade mail as well. He's Ruptured so for big. the moment. The big old crit comes down and connects. Four Skywrath never stood a chance. The Burrow Strike going to two. The damage coming from the Venomancer. Limp is still standing strong here. Era's going to drop, though, and they are pulling the Veno into the fountain. Don't do it, Rise. Ah, is going to actually be able to walk away from that one. I think he does live after the Hurricane Pike away with the Aegis coming back. Yeah, this one. Yeah, nice looking... attempt at Flame Break, but not going to happen. Limp did buy back, so he cannot afford to die again. Bloodseeker is dead, him and his Radiance. That's not going to really do that much damage to Lycan. And yeah, now he doesn't just care. One racks remaining. Limp, he's holding on for all he's worth. That's he wants to make the this last game work out. charge. A 747 is just going to stand got in it. Oh no, and now the Gale comes out. Limp Sky trying to get rough. over to the shrine. Is he going to be able to kick him oh. down? That is going to be a kill. But still, this is feeling like oh. it's a full errand at this point. Even if they kill off Ace here, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Limp trying to do it, but he is eventually going <laughs> oh to my die. God. Hands oh my God. the Hurricane Pike. Oh, no, he's, he's dead. Gonna be able to walk away. I he's, think he's dead. dead as well. Uh, and Pablo, they jump in. They're trying to take him down. That's going to be Skyrath dying in yes, the face. He they died. end up falling. They get the dual victory as well. Buybacks abound. 22,000 net worth lead. Alliance. Lycan, Lycan's coming in hot. 
They're they want, staggering. They want to end this game. <laughs> rupture. Who do you rupture? You rupture the Lycan. Uh, he's not, not going to do the blade melt thing again. He's yeah. just going to hit the barracks. <laughs> this is time to keep it going. And, well, Era is going to die yet again. Hand's going to drop as well. And soon to be those two words they're looking for. GG. And well played, because Danish Bear is definitely the cleanest victory of the EU qualifiers that I've seen thus far. There's not really that much, that many matches to reference, but you know, as a whole, the region has not been getting very much respect in this pre-TI season, and Danish Bears are.